What's going on guys? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds and today I'm here to talk with you guys about Star Wars The Bad Batch Episode 10 Common Ground, which while it may not have been my favorite episode, it was still a decent episode nonetheless. But before we get into the episode you guys, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share this video around as it really helps support the channel. If this is your first time watching, I like to do a lot of reaction videos to fan made Star Wars content, whether that be fan films or tribute videos. I also like to do a lot of discussion videos similar to what we're doing here today with The Bad Batch about every single Star Wars and Marvel show that shows up on Disney Plus, whether they be WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7, The Mandalorian. We talk about it all here on this channel and we're going to continue to talk about each and every show that shows up on Disney Plus. Now, let's start talking about this episode because like I said before, this may not have been my favorite episode, but it was still a decent one. I think that while there may not have been like a surprise return like we've seen in like the past several episodes with there being, you know, people like Fennec Shan and Cad Bane, Captain Rex, we may not have gotten something like that. However, the story continued to progress with Omega and the Bad Batch, and we even got closure for like a small arc that's been kind of going throughout the show, and we'll kind of get into that. So we start out on Raxus, which is a planet, a separatist planet from back in the war in any way. But I think we also see it in the Clone Wars. I think ah Ahsoka and Padme go there uh, to meet Lux Bonteri and her mother. I'm pretty sure it was the same planet, but regardless, we end up starting out with an Imperial who, uh, we don't get her name right away, but she kind of addresses the people and is like, hey, you know, we want to be fair to all worlds, even Separatist ones, but you guys have to cooperate with us. Very Imperial-like the way she was talking. And then she's like, and now our, you're precious senator is going to say a few words, and the people go crazy for the senator. People love this senator, so yeah, this man must be popular, but good for him. Anyway, <laughs> he starts talking, and he, as he's talking, he almost realizes, like, all right, this ain't right, and he tells his droid beforehand, too, I forgot to mention. He's like, he tells the droid, hey, if something goes wrong, you know what to do, and this guy who goes up there, and he's like, yeah, you know, we got to follow what the Empire is doing. You know, they're giving us all this stuff. It's all good, and then he realizes, no, no, this this is wrong. I am not for the Empire. We need to stand up to this. And then they take him away, and the people start to rebel too, and then insert ATTEs, which was crazy. I think that's the first time we've seen them in this show. I mean, besides the, like, a first episode. Uh, but yeah, I, maybe we've seen them before, but, like, it's been a while, so to see them again was pretty refreshing and very cool to see. Then we get to the Bad Batch, who's on Ord Mantell, and I'm thinking in my head, like, crap, they're going to see Sid, aren't they? And so Wrecker and Omega are still eating that popcorn that I guess I have researched at this point that it actually is at Galaxy's Edge. I had said before that if it wasn't at Galaxy's Edge, it needed to be there. Um, but of course, with my dumb luck, it already happened to be an item there, which surprisingly when I went like a while back, it wasn't there, but maybe I just wasn't looking good enough. I don't know. Omega's sitting there excited like, hey, what's the next mission? And Echo, or uh, not Echo, Hunter and Tech were both like, we need to keep a low profile, like, you know, Omega's been through a lot, we gotta make sure we're, there's two bounty hunters after us, which is exactly what I said in the last episode, or in our last discussion that we did, is that it felt like the Bad Batch needed to stay low, we shouldn't be going on any more missions, because it's gonna put Omega in danger, and then what happens about, like, a minute later, they go to see Sid, and Sid gives them another mission, and I'm just like, son of a gun, and then I start questioning, like, okay, so what is this debt to Sid that they owe. Like, why do they why do they owe her so much? I Because I, I swear she's still playing them. And even by the end of this episode, I can still make the argument that she's playing them. Sid gives them the mission to go rescue the Separatist Center that we see get kidnapped at the, you know, start of the episode. They leave Omega with Sid, which I was immediately like, why would you do that? But then I started thinking, and as, as Sid said too, it's in your best interest uh, for, you know, Omega to be safe. You guys can complete your mission. We all get our money. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, I guess that makes sense. I can see that because Sid is someone who's all about getting money. So I guess maybe we can trust her for now, but I still, in the end, don't trust her. So something that we see throughout this entire episode is that Echo is very much against this mission and them helping out a Separatist because, you know, Echo, he was on the Republic for so long and going against the Separatists. Like, there's kind of that, almost like an ego thing there, right? Like, why would we be helping out our enemies? 
enemy, like these guys were trying to overthrow the Republic. It almost kind of reminded me a bit of Star Wars Rebels with Rex and Kalani and that whole thing that went down. Like both of their pride was all for Republic or all for Separatists that like it took a lot for them to finally put their differences aside and go up against the Empire. All right, guys, I got a question for you. Those were droid poppers that they were using on clones, right? And then that begs the question, droid poppers work on clones? I mean, I guess it makes sense. I just never thought of it working that way before. You know what I'm saying? Because we've only ever seen droid poppers used on, well, droids. And for those who may be questioning, well, why would I think they're droid poppers? They make the same damn sound as droid poppers in the Clone Wars, all right? And I know my stuff, trust me. We also find out in this episode that Omega is very good at Dejeric. I think I pronounced that right, right? You guys know what I'm saying, but the table game from episode four a New Hope. I think we see uh, Chewie and Finn play it in uh, The Rise of Skywalker as well. So yeah, a very common you know game that we've seen played in, in Star Wars before. Omega, I guess, was very good at it because then Sid is like, hey, you mind winning a few games for me? And I love the way that Omega was super smart and be like, but what's in it for me? And she tries to, and then Sid tries to go with the 30% bullshit again. And then Omega's like, nope, I want 60. So clearly that was enough to get Sid to be like, all right, you know what? Fine. And then eventually, you know, kind of jumping ahead to the end of the episode for a second, but that helps pay off their dead. So we find out that the Imperial officer's name is Captain Bragg. I don't think I've heard of her before. I don't recall her it being in anything from Star Wars before. It might just be a new character, uh, but she brings in a mind probe that she's going to use, which I'm pretty sure a mind probe we haven't seen before in this show either, uh, to use against this senator to probably just torture him or get some sort of information out of him, but the Bad Batch comes and rescues him, and that's that. They end up escaping through the city. They use an ATAT -AT to get make their escape, and then it was, it was during this part of the episode that I did notice something. The Bad Batch weren't killing clones. They were stunning them. Very similar to what we see Rex doing in the Clone Wars finale. So... Uh, very interesting, because before they had no problem shooting them with blaster bolts, so curious now why they're choosing to use stun. I don't know. Very, very curious about that. Like, I get they wouldn't want to kill their brothers, but then at the same time, did the Bad Batch really care too much for the regs anyway in the Clone Wars, except for, like, Rex? I don't know. I know Dave Filoni has always been against, like, the, the main heroes killing people. Like, they he doesn't like it when and main characters are seen killing other people, um, which, like, I, I get his reasoning for it, but I think, like, sometimes, like, there's, you know, perp like, there's purposes for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially in Star Wars Rebels, there were a lot of scenes in, in some of those episodes where, like, you know, they should clearly just be killing stormtroopers, but for whatever reason, they're not, and I think it took them until, like, I think the end of season four for Ezra to finally slice up a couple stormtroopers, and it's like, like, all right, it's about freaking time. The Bad Batch end up escaping through a wall. Like, they park the ATTE next to a wall, which, like, was a dead end for them. They plant a bomb, shut the AT, AT door go outside or let the bomb blow up and then they escape through the hole. It was a rather ingenious plan by the senator, if I do say so myself. And as they're about to escape, he kind of looks back and he's like, what am I doing? I'm abandoning my people. And his droid is like, no, 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 you need to come with us. You need to survive. Like you can't, you're, you're no good to your people dead. And what I liked about this next part was the fact that Echo was the voice of reason. The person who is against this whole freaking mission goes up to him and says, the droid's right live to fight another day. And I'm like, all right, Echo, I see you. I get the, you know, respect factor there. Because Echo, I think, realized, like, all this dude, like, this dude, he doesn't care about the war between the Republic and the Separatists. He doesn't care about being like, oh, I'm gonna lead these, these clones into a trap and kill them just to get a bit of closure for myself. No, I just want what's best for my people. Echo saw that. They get back to the uh, Ord Mantell and they get back to that cantina and Omega is just doing a phenomenal job playing 
playing Dejeric and she is kicking booty. Uh, Sid's just sitting there having the time of her life because of how smart Omega is and how much money they're making. And then once they see the Bad Batch and they win their final matchup, it's like, all right, bets are off. We're done. Hunter's pissed off and rightfully so because he's like, you're supposed to be keeping a low profile because like what happens if someone from the Empire was in here or someone, you know, could have seen you and taken you. But at the same time, Omega was able to finish an arc that has been going on since episode 5 when it came to them meeting Sid, and that's paying off this debt to her. So you can't say that this was a filler episode, because we did complete something that's been kind of, you know, a story, like, it's been, it's something that's been part of the story for the past five episodes. So in that regard, it's not filler. And I, I really thought it was cool that Omega was able to do that, and now they can hopefully after this just be able to lay low and and avoid having to interact with Sid because just because Sid was nice here doesn't mean she'll be let nice later because we all know that Sid is just in this for money and that's all she really cares about so at the end of the day if the if the opportunity is given to her to sell out the Bad Batch and Omega like they she will do it in a heartbeat Hunter then tells Omega, all right, you and I are going to play a game. If if you win, you can come on every single mission with us. So Hunter and Omega play a game and screen fades to black and end credits roll. So we don't get to see what happens, but I'm sure it will be made uh, very apparent in the next episode whether or not Omega won or lost. And I'm pretty sure that she won. Hunter was like, are you ready for this? And Omega's like, are you? You gotta love it. However, I just hope that the Bad Batch really knows what they're doing now, like, in terms of them maybe being a little bit more careful, maybe them not having to go on so many missions now because the fact that they've paid off their debt to Sid, and now they just have to worry about finding a spot to hide because the Bad Batch is going to be hunted by the Bounty Hunters, they're going to be hunted by the Empire, they're, I mean, they're probably going to be, like, the most wanted people in the galaxy pretty soon. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, they became numero uno on and, you know, like the galaxy's most wanted list. And then that draws more attention to not just the bounty hunters in the empire, but like everyone in the galaxy. And that's why I also think that Sid would sell them out so quickly. So yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens in the next episode. I continue to say it every week, but I absolutely love this show. I love the Bad Batch. I love Omega. I just, I love this freaking show. And I want to, I want to know what you guys think about this episode and what you guys think about this show in the comments. Comments below. So make sure you guys do that. Maybe give me your predictions for what you think is going to happen in the next episode or how you think that this season's going to end. I'm very curious to see what you guys think about this show. So make sure you guys do that and make sure you also like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this video around as it really helps support the channel and I will see you guys next time. Stop, R2, we need to be going up.